Hello, welcome back to another Starry Story Time. I'm Tiffany Woolbrick at the Word Beecher Planetarium, and I'm here to share with you a story, a true story, about a real astronaut, Alan Bean. He was not just a scientist and engineer and, and all of the amazing things that you need to be to, to be an astronaut, um, athlete, all that, but he was also a very talented artist. And he did, he had many, many beautiful paintings of the moon uh, that was meant to express his experiences with traveling and walking on the moon. So I'm really excited to share this book with you today. The Astronaut Who Painted the Moon. This was written by Dean Robbins and illustrated by Sean Rubin. And let's get started. This is a quote from Alan Bean here. It says, my paintings record the beginning of a quest never to end, our journey out among the stars. Lights flashed, a rocket mumbled. Alan's Bean, Alan Bean's dream was about to come true. 10, you wanna count down with me? This is always fun, right? 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The rocket roared off the launch pad. Alan shook in his heavy spacesuit. The other astronauts were shaking too. Richard Gordon flipped switches on the control panel. That's a lovely liftoff. Pete Conrad shouted over the noise. The shaking stopped as the spacecraft gained speed. Alan was in outer space. He had trained so long as an astronaut and a scientist, and soon he would walk on the moon. That's got to feel really, really exciting, right? Could you imagine being at, traveling in outer space and knowing that you're going to get to walk on the moon? Oh. What an amazing feeling. That's the earth behind them. Alan gazed out the window, marveling at the shapes and colors in space. The sky turned black. When you're not in or under Earth's atmosphere, the sky is not blue. Space is not blue, it's black. We only see a blue sky because of our atmosphere and our sun. The earth was a blue and white ball glowing in the darkness. The moon was many shades of gray. Its mountains and craters seemed bigger the closer he got. Alan loved to think about the way things looked. As a boy, he made model airplanes to hang in his room. Green for the wings, red stripes for the tail, yellow stars along the side. He dreamed of being a brave pilot himself one day. Alan volunteered for Navy flight training. He learned to take off, soar through the air, and glide in for a smooth landing. Earth looked breathtaking from the co cockpit. The white clouds above, the green fields below, the blue all around. Alan wished he could paint what he saw. So even before he was an astronaut, he was inspired by the beauty of Earth. He found an art class to teach him about patterns and forms. Alan dabbed his brush on canvas to paint a vase of flowers. His flowers didn't look exactly real, but he didn't want them to. They were brighter and bolder than the real ones because he let his imagination take over. The painting showed how stunning the flowers looked through Alan's eyes, how they made him feel. The spacecraft, the spacecraft flew 240,000 miles in about four days, traveling from Earth to the moon. It takes about three and a half or four days. The moon was so close, Alan could see valleys and ridges. He and Pete got ready to walk on a new world. 
Alan strapped on an oxygen pack so he could breathe outside. He stepped through the hatch to the most amazing sight. This is the moon. And that's the earth in the background. Isn't that amazing? The moon was barren, but also beautiful in its own way. Gray dust as far as he could see, thousands of black craters, hard white sunlight, and everything perfectly still. So that because there's not really an atmosphere on the moon, it the sun is just a really bright star in the sky. It's not going to um, it's going to just have that harsh white light. It's not going to have the blue sky like we experience on Earth. And everything was really, really still because there's no wind, just like because there's no atmosphere, there's no weather on, on the moon. So it's got to be kind of eerily still when you visit the moon compared when you're used to all the weather and the breeze here on Earth. Alan and Pete pushed a red, white, and blue American flag into the dust. Alan puzzled over the strangeness of outer space. He and Pete took dozens of photographs. They set up scientific experiments to measure the moon's soil and gases. Even in his spacesuit, Alan was much lighter than on Earth. Because the moon is smaller, it has less, less gravity. Not zero, but less gravity. So we feel, you would feel a lot lighter on the moon. If there were no gravity, you would just be floating around in space. So there is some. But it's hard to get used to just suddenly being a, a, a lot lighter than you normally are. So it's, it was actually quite difficult for astronauts to, they had to relearn to walk on the moon. It's different than walking on Earth. So even in his spacesuit, Alan was much lighter than on Earth. He had fun bouncing around on his tiptoes. He could run and run and run without getting tired. His boots made deep marks where no one had stepped before. Could you imagine walking somewhere and knowing that no human has ever walked there before? Wow, what a feeling. Alan was super strong in the, moon, in the moon's gravity. He threw a, a rock and watched it go up and up and up. Would it ever come back down again? That's a good physics problem. <laughs> the three astronauts zoomed back to Earth at 25,000 miles an hour. Whoa, that's fast. They splashed into the Pacific Ocean to end their awesome adventure. That's how most astronauts come back to Earth, right? They, um, they land in, in the ocean and then they're uh, recovered with the boat from a rescue team. Alan's friends asked him about his time in space. What was it like up there? He tried to explain the moon's barren beauty, but words were not enough. And his photographs just showed a grim and gloomy place. There was so much more to the moon than that. So much magic and mystery. How could Alan share his story so that others would understand? He pulled out his paints and brushes. Alan knew he was the only artist ever to leave the earth. The only artist to ever see the moon up close. Maybe a painting could show how it felt to be in outer space. Alan began his work like a scientist. He built a model of the moon's surface and used an electric light as the sun. The model helped him paint the angles and shadows just right. Then Alan had let his imagination take over. He added red and purple in the gray dust, blue and green in the black craters, yellow and orange to the white sunlight. The moon didn't look exactly real, but Alan didn't want it to. The painting showed how stunning outer space looked through his eyes, how it made him feel. He hoped others would feel the same thing. 
the wonder of walking on a new world. That's Alan painting one of his paintings there. Alan liked his moon painting so much, he did another one, and another, and another after that. He mixed even brighter, bolder colors on his palette. Could he add real pieces of outer space to his paintings? Alan, Alan tried stamping them with astronaut boots. He scratched them with tools that he had used on the moon. He sprinkled dust from his spacesuit on the wet paint. The surfaces grew as rough and rugged as the moon itself. That's one of my favorite facts about Alan Bean's paintings, is that he used tools that he used in outer space to help create his art. And he sprinkled moon dust in most of his paintings of the moon. So there's a little piece of real outer space in all of his paintings. A museum displayed Alan's paintings for everyone to see. Other astronauts came to remember their own awesome adventures in space. Boys and girls came too. They marveled at the shapes and colors. They felt the wonder of walking on a world. Some dreamed of being brave astronauts themselves one day. Others dreamed of being great artists. And some dreamed of being both. That was our story. Here's a photograph of Alan Bean. Okay. He passed away just a couple years ago. But if you live in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, where, where I do and where Ward Beecher Planetarium is, just two buildings down from Ward Beecher um, is the, one of the, the best American art museums in the country, the Butler American Art Institute, and they have an original Alan Bean. So if you're able to go out um, when it's safe to do so, uh, go visit the Butler. It's, it's free to go in and explore and you can see one of Alan's paintings. Uh, we have one at the planetarium too, but I don't think it's original. I think it's a reprint. Um, but we love Alan Bean so much. Uh, he's inspired many people. So thank you for, um, for joining me again for a special story today. And uh, I hope to see you next week. Keep looking up.